Hello, this is Shambhavi. Welcome to Satsang. Satsang is an ancient spiritual practice from India. It means being in reality together. I give Satsang live every Wednesday and Sunday night in Portland, Maine. This Dharma talk was recorded during one of our Wednesday night gatherings. Please visit jayakula.org to learn more about the teachings. You can find video satsangs on Jayakula's YouTube channel, and my books are all available on Amazon.com. Much love to you, wherever and however you are. I was in a, a health practitioner's office this week, and I, there was an, a magazine on the table from some professional Ralphing association. And I was flipping through it. And there was an article in there about something that's, I guess, a fundamental principle in Ralphing called yielding. And they talk about it as yielding being kind of a, your basic best way of being in the world and relating to other people and relating to your own physicality and circumstances. And I was fascinated by this because I recognized that it's, first of all, something that I do all the time, and that it's actually a more useful, practical, day-to-day idea that could be put into practice than the famous or infamous letting go. (laughs) Let's say you're experiencing some difficult emotional moment or some compulsive idea moment, or you're having a rough patch with somebody else, you might get the advice from somebody to just let it go. Or you might think to yourself, oh, I should let this go. And letting go is kind of a tricky thing because, of course, no one can really let go until it's their time to be able to let go. And let go has this implication of a resolution. Not just that you're letting something go, but you're actually saying goodbye to it or leaving it behind or watching it sail off. So it has a kind of, I guess I hadn't realized this in thinking about it till I thought about the difference between letting go and yielding. Letting go has some kind of idea in it that we're not going to feel that thing anymore or that thing isn't going to bother us anymore. And that's very, very difficult. Of course, sometimes we do let go. Sometimes things let go without even trying. Those are the best times. Or we don't even notice until a week has gone by and we realize, oh, that thing, we let go of it, it's gone. But as a practical moment-to-moment practice that you can do when you're bothered by your own self or self in circumstance, Letting go isn't really that practical. The other thing is that you're kind of, in a lot of instances, because it's not really your time yet, the time is not ripe yet for that thing to resolve or for you to really be able to not feel that thing anymore or not be bothered by something. Then letting go just becomes kind of an intellectual exercise. You know, you're, you're instructing yourself to let go of something and and most of the time that just turns into like some sort of brute force thing where you are just trying to ignore something. (laughs) You haven't really let go of anything. Here's a definition of yielding I put together from just thinking about what it means to me and also reading this article. Yielding is a dynamic embodied state of awareness that brings sensation back to us, or emotion, sensation or emotion, back to us for inner exploration and includes the possibility that we would be exploring discomfort or disease. So let me read that again. Yielding is a dynamic embodied state of awareness that brings sensation or emotion back to us from where we had externalized it, for inner exploration. And then that inner exploration could include an exploration of discomfort or disease. It's not necessarily that we're going to feel better. 
So I want to go into this in more detail. There's one thing that characterizes yielding, the, the sort of pith of it that's different from letting go. Letting go is like leaving something. Yielding is moving into something or falling into something and feeling something. So yielding means that we have to sense circumstance. We have to use our senses to sense circumstance. What are we sensing? Well, we have to drop the story and sense something. We have to use our senses. So that's why it's embodied. We have to sense something because when we are thinking about yielding, we're, what are we yielding? We're yielding our argument. We're yielding our point of view. We're yielding being right. We're yielding getting our way. We're yielding having things go our way. We're yielding being in the condition we wish we were in. Now, let's say I'm talking to somebody and there's tension. And the tension is that that person, this never happens to me, by the way, that person is in a state of fixation and compulsion, and I am trying to impart some clarity and relaxation to them. However, if I just looked at it that way, in this sort of pro forma way, like, oh, you're in a state of tension, so let me impart some clarity to you. You have a problem? No, no problem with that, right? No, I have to feel the condition of this relationship with that person in that moment. I have to feel what, the, what it feels like between us. I have to feel the condition of that other person. Is there any point to me trying to impart clarity? Or of all of the things I might say, is there anything that would actually help in this situation? Or is the situation not ripe? Is there not really an opening? Is there not really the right feeling between us? Do I just have a sense that better to try another day? Right? So if I decide, or I, you know, just through feeling into, I, I'm talking to Charandas, I'm actually falling into the situation and feeling what's happening. And then maybe I just decide I feel that there's not much of a point in making my point. It's not going to be heard or it's not important to him or it's, you know, he can't digest it or whatever. Then I just yield. I yield my position and I stop trying to disturb him. This is the, the crux of yielding. yielding. So yielding means you have to feel the circumstance and you have to feel the time. Is this the right time? So let's say it has to do with something in our inner life, right? We're being bothered by thoughts or we're being bothered by emotions. And we're trying to get rid of those bothersome thoughts and emotions. And we're, we're, we're pelting ourselves with slogans and we're maniacally saying mantra but what if we just fell into that and sensed our condition instead of trying to bash ourselves into submission? What if we just sensed what's going on with us? What if we felt for the time? Is this, is this going to be a time when I can do something about this? If it's not, we can just yield, not to just going rampant into our fixations, but feeling just tenderly toward ourselves. Right. We can yield in that way internally. Oh, well, I'm not going to stop thinking about this right now. I'll do something a little bit softer to try to move my energy. I'll feel more tender toward myself. I'm not going to try to fix this right now. So yielding, and rather than letting go, yielding is you're actually making contact with something. You have to make contact with a circumstance or with yourself. And if you make contact with the circumstance, then 
you decide it's not the right time, you're just being there, being open-hearted, and there's nothing else to do. You're not disturbing people in their fixation, and you're also not disturbing yourself. Now, what happens if you are in a state of fixation and you are treating someone else through the lens of your fixation and you notice that and you decide to, that you're just going to yield, right? You're going to stop disturbing people with that. And when you yield your position, you yield, you just yield, yield. You stop trying to make that person do anything or think anything or feel anything or go your way. You just stop trying to do that. Even if you think you're right or whatever, then what happens is you get all of that sensation and emotion back. So one of the things that was described in this article about yielding in in the context of doing this kind of massage is that when you yield, there's a burst of sensation. So it's just like when a muscle that is tight or they work with fascia. So when when that fascia lets go, there's a burst of sensation in that area. It's just the same with you. When you yield in a circumstance, there's a burst of energy and sensation because you now are just on your own ground and whatever that was being pushed out is now just yours. Right. So it, unlike letting go, it brings you back to sensation. It brings you back to feeling yourself. And it also allows you to be more gentle and intimate with other people, less manipulative and aggressive. So yielding means we are sensing and reading a situation or ourselves, not projecting and narrating. You can imagine how many times a day I need to do this because I'm working with people who don't have the clarity that I have and who are more subject to fixation and compulsion than I am. And not all of it can be worked with all at once. I'm working with students over years, not over minutes or days or months. So I'm seeing things that maybe I can't bring to you for years, till years from now, because I'm sensing what condition you're in and trying to only work with you with what I think is possible for you to work with in any particular moment. I might be wrong sometimes. I know I am, but that's what I'm doing. I'm yielding in the sense that I'm not sharing with you all the insights I have. I'm not pushing you to do stuff I don't think you're ready for. It's a very, very delicate situation where I am sensing into your condition and trying to respond to that in a yielding way without me taking up a position with respect to you about you know how you have to be. And then if I share something with you, this happens all the time. I share things to the best of my ability when I think it's the right moment, and then sometimes it takes a very long time for someone to digest that or be able to to understand what I was talking about. So I would say 90% of my day involves this process of yielding. (laughs) Yielding means we're sensing and reading, not projecting and narrating. We let things be and we release the weight of our need to assert ourselves. We release the weight of our need to assert ourselves. And when we do that, we, inc- we are much more flexible. We're not so bound by the idea that we have to respond to everything just because we have some feeling or thought about it. So I think this process of yielding our ground, yielding, I mean, our ground of our fixation and our reactivity, yielding that need to be right or to be seen or to be understood or to be heard, all those things that we desperately try to get from other people. If we yield those things when it's appropriate, sometimes we can be heard. 
sometimes we can be understood. I'm not saying that we never get to be heard or understood, but a lot of the times we're just blindly going about compulsively trying to force other people to relate to us in a certain way or get something out of a certain situation. And that is a, a weight that we are carrying right? and, and exhausting ourselves with. Yielding, sensing into a situation and feeling if it's for the right time of something and yielding when, we, when it's, we've sensed that it's the right time to yield creates flexibility. It creates open-heartedness because we feel the other person more. Uh, it supports us to be more sensitive, energetically sensitive, uh, especially. And very, very importantly, we become more sensitive to our own condition because we are not externalizing it so much. We're not asserting ourselves so forcibly. And so we have more chance to be sensitive to what condition we're really in. When we externalize our fixations, it's a numb out situation. How many times have you thought, oh, I wish I hadn't done that? Because when you were doing it, you weren't being aware. <laughs> you were in a state of compulsion. Your energy was being driven by karmic momentum. That's a state, that is a condition of numb out. And when we are being more sensitive and feeling for the energy of a circumstance and feeling for the ripeness of something, and then we choose not to externalize the profound insight we were planning on laying on the other person, then we get to feel that energy and that circumstance in us, and we develop more sensitivity. So the general principle is that we arrive in the circumstance. We go, we fall into that circumstance. We feel it and we sense it. And then we can explore ourselves more by yielding to others. And we can also, in sensing when it isn't the time for us necessarily to let go, we can also just relax in that tenderness toward ourselves. Right. Because we've felt the situation and we've understood it more. Right. And we know that other people are in that condition too. So, Although when we don't externalize our fixation so much, anxiety can be provoked. I think ultimately, because we are also relaxing, it leads to a deeper experience of stillness <coughs> and of peacefulness. You could describe this process as falling into an environment and sensing it and exploring it while at the same time internally exploring what it feels like to do that. It's kind of beautiful and great. Because I think this is way more useful than letting go, this idea of yielding. It's much more often about yielding, feeling and sensing something and then yielding when the time is not right or when you recognize it's your own fixation, you yield that. You yield your right to project that out. And it's, it's, it's a very soft and rich thing to do. And it, it sort of gets us around all that language of what I have the right to do and what's fair and etc. because we're really working with what we're sensing right then rather than with some rule or concept about something. Let's say that you, you get to an intersection and there's a sign that says yield yeah. to oncoming traffic. Well, then you're perfectly happy sitting there waiting as oncoming traffic clears. You know what you're supposed to do. It means st take a step back and let someone else continue. But what if you get to an inter a four-way intersection 
and someone coming this way, you're going this way, and someone coming this way is obviously not going to properly stop and give you the right of way, which you should, which you actually uh, should have. Well, if you don't yield, even in that circumstance where you are right, you will get in a collision. So in that circumstance, you have to yield even though it's really your turn, mm -hmm. right? And then there might be another circumstance where you're at the same intersection and you are in a pissed off mood and you, want, you don't want to wait for somebody else and you realize that you have this forward momentum and anger going on, but you decide to yield anyway and just feel that energy and not act on it. So those are some different situations about yielding. So the yielding is like when grass blows in the wind, it's yielding to the wind, right? It's a soft kind of bending movement. When you're yielding, you're just recognizing, and this was actually something I feel quite often, you're just recognizing your helplessness in a situation. Because you're helpless because it's just not the time or the circumstance for you to get your way or for you to be able to say what you want to say or get your point across or stomp around being whatever. I had an experience just a couple of days ago, not somebody in the Kula, but someone I know as a friend uh, responded to me in a passive aggressive way. And... Then shortly after that, she wrote me another text saying that she'd just been playing around. I just started weeping. I just felt so helpless. Like I just felt there's so much here in this one tiny little moment, but I can't really say any of it to this person. She wouldn't understand and she probably doesn't even care. You know, she's not a close friend. She's someone who's a girlfriend of somebody I'm close to. So she probably wouldn't really care what I had to say about it or want to have a heart-to-heart -heart with me. And it was an, an extremely rich little exchange and, I, and full of her own anxiety and fear. And I really felt for her, but I knew there was nothing I could do. And so I just wept out of sheer helplessness. We hardly ever let ourselves feel helpless like that, but we always are. I mean, you know, nine times out of ten, we actually are helpless. And it's fine. It's only because circumstances are much bigger than us. And things happen in due time. They don't happen on our timetable. So that includes other people's unfolding and our own. It just doesn't happen on our timetable. And, and so that just creates a large zone of helplessness. You can have a million great insights about yourself and other people, but that doesn't necessarily mean things are going to let go or be understood or become clear or the people are going to be more compassionate or more kind or more responsive or wiser. It doesn't mean that. That happens when it happens. And every now and then we can do something that seems to play a role in that. <laughs> but... <laughs> The rest of the time, if we're not yielding, we're bashing our heads against ourselves or somebody else. It's just such a bigger playing board than any one of us can have a huge impact on. You know, this idea that you get back sensation and emotion to explore internally or externally because you're also feeling into circumstance that's like a banquet. That's a huge banquet. But we don't get to choose what's on the menu most of the time. So it's not like because we don't get to choose and we're helpless that there isn't in this other aspect to it, which is this banquet-like aspect where we are tasting everything and feeling everything with our senses and, and exploring things. That's what we're doing. We're not controlling things we're feeling and sensing and exploring. So you kind of have to shift our paradigm from trying to be in control to trying to explore and feel. 
And it's not a psychological thing where you're like going into your feelings and wallowing in them. Right? You're just being able to notice how you are, right? And if you can work with that, there's always something to work with. Let's say that you are the person who has more clarity in some circumstance, but the other person is just not the right time to share. And it wouldn't be helpful to that other person. It would just be aggressive for no other, you know, it would become this egoic aggression if you actually shared something with them. Then you get to work with your feeling of compassion and tenderness and how you really wanted to help, but the, the person's not ready to receive your help. You know, that's, a, that's also something you can feel and notice and explore. Or how do you, what about when things just don't go your way? And, you know, we have both small moments when things don't go our way, small disappointments, small frustrations, small losses. But we also have bigger flows in our lives. You know, we could call it astrology. When we go through periods where we're getting to taste that feeling of not getting what we want, and it's part of the banquet. If we're not trying to fix it, we're not trying to let go of it, we're just exploring it, that's all. And we're doing our practice and we're trying to relax. And really that's all we're doing, we're just trying to relax on this, in this very profound way. And that means also relaxing our determination to scramble out of uncomfortable feelings. When we do that, we're like picky eaters, right? <laughs> we only want white foods. <laughs> we only want sweet tastes. And a lot of being able to do this comes from confidence in reality. Or you could confidence in Ma or confidence in something like that. The ability to have an uncomfortable feeling or yield something that you thought was important or yield some sort of reactivity uh, or and just kind of be with whatever you feel after that and not feel like something's wrong with you. You know, when in this culture, if we lose or we fail or somebody doesn't respond the way we want them to, we think there's something wrong with us a lot of the time. If we don't think there's something wrong with the other fellow, then we think there's something wrong with us. We only have those two poles. I mean, there's actually not anything wrong with anybody. <laughs> That's the truth. There's nothing wrong with anybody. Yeah. Yielding is not inactive at all. It's di very, very dynamic because you're, have, you're just full of awareness and engagement with something using your senses. And then you're, the act of yielding is, is very dynamic. And then in the aftermath of that, you're then noticing and work, get to work with what you feel, right? So it's extremely dynamic. It's not as externalized, right? So let's say I have an altercation with somebody about money or a disagreement, and they think it should go one way and I think it should go another way, and then I just decide to yield, even though maybe I still think they're wrong. I just decide um, that we're not going to resolve this in a way that I'm going to be happy with. And it's not going to be something that the other person can hear or work with. And sometimes for me, the situation is just with the other person is just being too ordinary. The, I'm saying one thing and they're coming back at me with something extremely ordinary minded. And I can't, I try, but I cannot get them off of that. And then that's that. I have, to, I have to yield. I have to just be helpless. It's different than, let's say, I was in that same altercation, and I just kept arguing with them, and then I took them to small claims court. And I mean, that would seem like very externally active, right? But, I, but I, it is still extremely dynamic and active. It's just happening more internally. Maybe I say to the person, oh, okay, fine. Let's just leave this go. For now, I'll, I'll, you can keep my money. I've done this so many times, countless, countless times. 
Even sometimes I do it when there's no argument or no actual obvious thing that I'm yielding to. But when a situation feels like it's there's the potential of me being involved in something that doesn't feel clean to me, I'll often just back out and yield. Like this happened recently with some place where I taught. And there was some funny, I don't know if it was dishonest, but there was something funny about the way the money was handled. And if I were in ordinary mind, I could have just said, hey, prove to me, blah, 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 show me the accounting. And I just was like, you know what? I don't even want to know what happened. I, I'm just, I don't even want to be using my energy to do this. I'm just going to yield. So there's that kind, for me, that kind of situation too. I don't want to get into, if I even like sense an impacted, entangled situation might arise, I'll often just yield. And then sometimes I step my foot right in the mud. But that happens too. <laughs> There's a, a Joey hexagram that relates to this a little bit. The woman is strong, do not marry her. And you could say that that's really sexist, but it could mean a strong force. Don't get entangled in a strong force. I often take it that way. So there's many other interpretations of that hexagram, of course, but when you sense that there's a strong force that would eat up a lot of your energy in dark situations that really aren't dharmic. Even if you feel like you could win or something is unfair, or it's not right or blah, blah, blah. I can be very righteous about things. I guess I'm just giving the kind of examples I would get into because when something isn't fair, I can definitely get on my high horse about it. But okay, so it's not fair. You know, well, am I going to, like, go around correcting every unfair situation on the planet? <laughs> exactly. It, part of it's, like, deciding what is kind and helpful in a situation. Is it kind and helpful to just keep bashing around with somebody for no purpose, no, no positive outcome? Uh, is it kind and helpful to yourself to keep using your energy in a useless way or to keep promulgating your fixations just because you want to be right or you want to win or you want to get something? You know, the, the, none of those things are dharmic. It's better just to yield. I mean, yielding could also look like doing something that you don't necessarily want to do. I mean, it could look like doing or not doing. And I think, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking like the ultimate yield, the maha yield is, is when you have a real recognition that everything that's happening is arranged by this cosmic intelligence. And so you're always yielding to that in a sense. As long as you're following to the best of your ability, that direction that that seems to be pointing in, then you're yielding all the time. It's, a, it's an aspect of following wisdom. It can be very practical in the grain of the moment, but there's also that bigger picture of just recognizing that everything that happens is that intelligence, and so there's really no circumstance that's really wrong. And every circumstance is there for you to work with it. What we're really working with when we're yielding is like our feeling that something's not right. It seems that that maybe is at the bottom of all yielding. We don't, what we're feeling isn't right. What we're thinking isn't right. What we're doing isn't right. What the other person is doing isn't right. What the other person is thinking and saying isn't right. The circumstance isn't right. And something has to be changed. All of our compulsions revolve around that. So if we actually have the embodied experience, the direct understanding from real experience, that it is that intelligence that is creating all these circumstances, even our own fixations, then 
every time we have that feeling that something isn't right, which we will continue to have, <laughs> we can remember that, yes, of course, it's fine. It is right. It's what that intelligence has created. And our only job is to work with it. Jayakula is a nonprofit community offering opportunities to learn and practice in the direct realization traditions of Trika Shaivism and Dzogchen. We are based in Portland, Maine and Portland, Oregon. Visit jayakula.org to explore more of our offerings.